Welcome to Reeducated TV, where we keep you informed. Hello everyone, we are at it again with the Anacalypsis, but before we start, I know that religion is a touchy topic in any era of society. With that said, viewers discretion is advised. Okay, let's begin. Today's topics are names of places, Rajputs, Rani of Patholomy, Indian chronology, Ajimir, Mount Sion, Sion and Hera Selima, various mounts of Selima, temples of Solomon, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, meaning of Jerusalem, temples of Solomon in Kashmir. We will now examine the names of some of the states and cities in India and in them I think we shall find conclusive proofs of the place where Judaism came from and probably along with Ayo Ayu, the first written language. In India, in very ancient times, there was a state of great power. Its capital was in latitude 26 degrees 48 minutes north and longitude 82 degrees 4 minutes east of prodigious extent being one of the largest of Hindustan anciently called Ayoda or Oude it was and yet is a place celebrated for its sanctity to which pilgrims resort from all parts of India the Hindu history states that it was the seat of power of a great prince called Dasaratha the father of Rama and of Rama, the brother of Krishna. Dasaratha extended his conquest as far as Kilan, which he subdued. We shall find in a future page from the similarity of the mythos in South India to that of Oude, reason to believe this story of the conquest to be substantially true. Ayodhya or Ayoda is nothing but Judea, and Oude, Judah. Ayodhya is Ayodhya, country of the sacred Ayo, or Ayu, or Jud, or Yud. I shall return many times to this etymon. So Ayoda means Judea, and Oude means Judah, that came from the Indus. Let's move on. I feel little doubt that the tribe of Ayud was expelled from this kingdom, perhaps from Maturia from which place they took their names. Every difficulty will be removed if we suppose that the religious wars of the sects of the Ioni and Linga were long and had alternate successes. And this perfectly agrees with the Hindu histories, which represents the wars to have been long. And of this description, the cities above named are situated a little westward of Tibet, the tribe of Ayud, or the Brahmin Abraham, was expelled from or left the Maturia of the kingdom of Oude in India, and settling at Goshen, or the house of the sun, or Heliopolis in Egypt, gave it the name of the place which they had left in India, Maturia. I beg my reader to look back to Book 5. Chapter 8, Section 1, for all the striking circumstances of connection for a vast number of years between the tribe of Abraham and Heliopolis. Let him also consider what I said just now, respecting this same city of destruction, being called the city of Seth or Typhon, and of Abaris or Avaris, that is, of the Hebrews. Okay, so they are letting you know that there is a very ancient state of great power and one of the largest of the Indus called by the ancient name Ayoda or Oude. Ayoda means Judea and Oude means Judah, the country of the sacred Ayo and is the origin of the Jews as we will establish in the course of this lesson. There was also mention of the religious wars between the Ioni and the Linga. The tribe of Ioni was the tribe of the Brahman Abraham, who was expelled or forced from the Indus and settled at Goshen, which was the city of 
Hun or Heliopolis or the city of the sun in Egypt and this name that they gave to the city in Egypt was the name they took with them from the Indus the said name Maturia they also mention the city of destruction or the city of Seth or Typhon and Avaris or Abaris of the Hebrews now we will see that the correct name or original name of the Most High, pronounced Ieue or Iue, gave birth to the name Iude, which means Judea. Ieue or Iue or Iu means Yud or Jud or Jew, and I have already shown you that Oude means Judah. So in short, the name of the Most High, I-U-E, or I-E-U-E, means Jew. We have seen that the city of Avaris was probably called Avaris, which meant strangers or Hebrews, and close to it was the Mount of Iude. Bryant shows that this Avaris was called Sirkasora, which will turn out to be the same as the Kalisapura, in the kingdom of Ayodhya or Oude in India. Thus we shall connect Machuria, Judah and Abraham together and as I have suggested the doctrines of Krishna or the Lamb. There is an account of the Hyperborean called Abaris that is that he came into Greece carrying in his hand the arrow of Apollo which served him as a passport through all countries Colonel Todd has given an instance of the arrow of a tribe from the kingdom of Oude being made use of as a passport exactly in the same manner. Coincidences of this kind appear trifling, but they are in reality very important. They render it probable that the same mythos is in both countries. Abraham came from Mesopotamia of the Chaldees. This precisely answers to the situation of Mutra or Maturia on the Jumna. It is the country of the ancient kingdom of Oude between the two rivers Ganges and Indus and is called Duab or Mesopotamia as I have before stated. He probably came just before the change of the worship took place from Taurus to Aries, from Buddha to Krishna. So avarice is said to be avarice and it means strangers referring to the Hebrews. It was said to be called Sarakasura which is the same as Kalisa Pura in the kingdom of Ayoda or Oude in the Indus. Please take note Abraham came from the Mesopotamia of the Chaldees of Mutra on the Jumna which is the country of the ancient city of Judah found between the two rivers of the Ganges and Indus and is known as the Duab the place of the Tatars, Saxons, Ioni, Jews and others the Duab is also called Mesopotamia the first Mesopotamia, the first Judea and Judah where the name of the Most High came from Ieue or Iue came from the Ayo or the Aya, which is also the Jud, the Yud, or the Jew. We also see that the same myth of Abaris carrying the arrow of Apollo into Greece as a passport is also in the Indus. In fact, it was in the Indus first. I hope it did not go over your heads. But the Chaldeans were from the Maturia or the ancient Judea of the Indus. And you should also note that it was said that it is possible that Abraham left the Indus just before the changes of worship took place. When the sun cycle or the cycle of the Neros changed from Taros to Aries, from Buddha to Krishna, and because of this ancient cycle, created by the black orientalists of the Indus, we know that it was about 4,000 and odd years before Christ when Abraham left the Indus. 
Let us suppose, for the sake of argument, that a tribe or sect was expelled from India. Is it not natural to expect that when they settled in a distant country, they would give the same names to their new habitations after they had conquered or acquired them, as those places were which they left? And if this were the case, is it not probable that though several thousand years may have since passed, the names of the new settlements should be found in the old country. Thus it is, and as this was a sect or national religion widely extended, and not the inhabitants of a town merely, it happens that we have names of places in the country near the Mediterranean where they settled, which are found in many parts of India, in Siam, Pegu, Tibet, etc., I beg my reader to refer to the map which is taken partly from those of Bishop Heber and Colonel Todd, and he will find the kingdom of Oude, anciently Ayodhya, in a district called Agra, in which is a city called anciently Arga or Agra. It was in ruins in the time of Akbar and was rebuilt by him and called Akbarabad. He will also find a place called Daud Nagar, that is Dud, Dud or David Nagar. Nagar means fort or walled town. There is also a district called Daud Patra, that is town of the sons of David. Thus, we have a city of David and a country of the children or sons of David. So the same names found in the Mediterranean and other places can be found in the ancient Indus and proves that the black orientalists peopled all these places and that their national religion was widely extended. There is also a map which shows the kingdom of Oude or the ancient Ayodhya in a district called Agra or Aga. If you remember, the name Arga is the name of the Ark, symbolized by a boat. The city was said to be in ruins, but was rebuilt by Akbar and called Akbarabad. No, in the Indus, the city of Dudnagar can be found. Dud means David, and Nagar means walled town. So you have the city of David. And also Daud Patra, which means town of the sons of David. How many of us knew that there was a city of David and the city of the sons of David in the ancient Indus before the names were taken to the Mediterranean? Maturia has been before noticed in Egypt and on the Jumna or Jumuna or Yamuna. There is also a city in the same country called Jaudpur or Yudapur or the city of Jud where Bishop Heber says are the ruins of a magnificent city. This is called by Colonel Tad Udepur. It is about latitude 24 and a half and longitude 73 and three quarters. There are also several other towns of the same name. There is also in about latitude 26 and a quarter and longitude 73, a city called by Colonel Todd Jodhpur with a district of the same name, about latitude 27 and longitude 76, may be seen a town called Jaipur with a district of the same name. There is also about latitude 26, longitude 78, a district called Jado Oulwati. Bishop Heber says, the king of the country of Jood or Judpur is called Malek, that is, in correct Hebrew, the king. All these places as well as Delhi and Baneers were included in the kingdom of Oud or Ayodhya or Judah. We have already established that Maturia was in the Indus and the same name was given to the city in Egypt before it was called on or Heliopolis by the Greeks. There is a city in Maturia in the Indus called Jood Pur or Yudapur, which means the city of Yud, Jud, 
or the city of Aue, or the city of the Most High. There are several towns of the same name found in Maturia, including Delhi and Beniers, and were all a part of the kingdom of Judah in India. We also see that the Hebrew name Malek means king. There are three places in a triangle between 25 and 30 degrees of latitude and about 73 of longitude in the kingdom of Oude or Judah, the first called Oudepur or Chietur or Mewar or Midwar, the second Judpur or Yudapur, the third called Ambir or Amir or Jayangar or Jayangar or Jayapur. I need not remind my reader that he must strike off the syllabus poor or poor, which means place or town, and then he will have the real name, as we may expect from its name Midwar or Medway in English, or Udepur or Chietor is in the middle of the other two. My reader may smile at this observation, but the farther back he goes, the more numerous he will find these kinds of extraordinary coincidences. They are the words of an universal and very old language. In some of the northern nations, they is called Var. This is similar to Midwar and Medway, Med or Midday. Okay, there are several cities in the kingdom of Oude that have the same names. You have three cities with the name Oudepur or Chietor or Mewar or Midwar. Then there is Judapur or Judapur. And the third is called Ambir or Amir or Jayangar or Jayangar or Jayanpur, in which all means place of the Most High or place of Iue, or Ieue, or Jud, or Yud, or Ju, place of Ayo, Aya. Even the word midday is from the word midwar, medway, which means day, and is still being used in the words midday, today, Sunday, Monday, and so on. The river Chelum, or Jalum, or Jailun, or Behut, or Jenaut, has on its west side the country of the Jaudis, at the foot of the mountains of Jaud. There is also a place or district in this country called Sheba, or Sheba. There is also a tribe called Jajuhas, which descended from the Jaudis. Here are the Jews, descended from Judah. In the mountains of Solomon are found a tribe of people called Judoons, that is Judeans, and a place called Gosa, that is Gaza, and a people called Jajauns, and another called Jaujis, Jews. The mountains of Solomon, or Solomon, have this name in the old books, though they are not commonly known at this time by it. These mountains are higher than the Andes, one of the mounts of the chain is called Sufid Ko. The Sufis of Persia are called Sufaris. In this country also is the city of Enoch, the Anukta of Ptolemy. Now, next to the river Chelum or Jalum, on the west side of the country is where you have the Jaudis or the Jews, right at the foot of the mountain called Jaud. There was also mention of a district called Sheba or Sheba. There is the tribe of Jajuhas who were the descendants of the Jews or Judah. It cannot be any clearer that the Jews, the place Judah, Judea, Gaza, the mountains of Solomon, Maturia, Syria, Jerusalem and other names originated from the ancient Indus. There was mention of Solomon, whose original name was Solomon, found in the ancient text, and is not used anymore. The mountains of Solomon are higher than the Andes, 
and one of those mountains are called Sufed Ko, which is used by the Sufis of Persia, whom are called Sufaris. We could not leave out that there was a city of Enoch called the Anukta of Ptolemy. Colonel Todd says the traditions of the Hindus assert that India was first peopled or colonized by a race called Yadu, to which they trace the foundations of the most conspicuous of their ancient cities. The Yadus are in the unpolished dialect pronounced Yadu or Jadoons. The Yusufis or tribe of Joseph is also called Jadoons, that is, Judeans. The country of Chiator or Udipur belongs to the tribe called Jajputs, their chiefs called by their title Rana. In Ptolemy, they are called Rani. They are a most warlike tribe and in fact have never been permanently subdued. They are the warrior tribe noticed by Arian and Diodorus. Not far from the above is a town called Ajimir, the Gajasmira of Ptolemy. Father Georgius admits the truth of what I have said respecting the names of the Indian places. He says, Regnum, Ayodhya, alias Avad, meaning Ayodhya and Oude. He then shows that are all the same as the Ayude of the Hebrews or the Ieue or the Ayude. And he gives the following translation of a passage of the Bhagavan. Of course, all with the monk is clearly copied from the kingdom of Judah, which Herodotus could not find. Is it possible for any proof to be more clear than this of the truth of the theory advocated by me of the double mythos in eastern and western Syria? So the traditions of the Hindus assert that India was first peopled by Yadus and in the unpolished dialect it is pronounced Jadu or Jadoons that was said to be the tribe of Joseph but you should know that they were several Josephs but the first concept or mythos of Joseph was from the Indus the tribe of Joseph is called Jadoons they also mentioned that the country of Chiator or Udipur belongs to the tribe called Rajputs. Their chief are called by the title of Rana or Rani. They are very warlike people and has never been permanently subdued. Close to the town of Chiator is the town called Ajimir. You should also note that Gayadu or Gayadu and Gayadubansi are all the same as Iude of the Hebrews and of course we have already established that the East and Western Syria shared the same mythos. I shall not attempt to enter into the history and chronology of India. I consider that it is so contaminated with nonsense and fraud that it is merely soiling paper to transcribe it. The Grecian heroic times are since compared to it. I will give one specimen from which a comparison may be made with all the others. Parasurama, who lived since the time of Christ, looking down from a hill on the seashore, saw some deceased Brahmins. These by magic he brought to life, and from them descended the Ranas of Yudayapur, as Major Wilford calls it to disguise the true name, the city of Judea. This is a fair specimen of the way in which the lost origin of the various tribes is accounted for. From this, I shall be told that these Ranas are of modern date, but Ptolemy's notice of them, as well as of Gazamera or Ajimir, settles this question. They were kings of one of the very old cities of the tribe of Yehudi, miscalled or disguised by the name of Yudayapur. Colonel Todd gives it its proper name and calls it Ayode or Oudipur. The notice of the Rani by Ptolemy 
shows that the tribe was in existence before the dispersion of the Jews in the time of Vespasian. In the attempt to discover the truth in questions of this kind, it is very seldom that a proof of a fact can be obtained, but I think it is obtained respecting the Rani of Oudipur. They were evidently here in the time of Ptolemy, and they are yet remaining. There can be no shadow of pretense to set up that they have been destroyed by the Mohammedans and the city of Oude or Oudipur, built by Mohammedans, and since that time a new tribe of Rani set up, the city of Gagazmera or Ajimir confirms this. The city of Oudipur is very large and carries on the face of it marks of extreme antiquity. If the antiquity of the city of Oude or Oudipur and its Rani be considered to be proved and that they existed before the time of Christ, I think it carries with it pretty good presumptive proof that all the other towns in its neighborhood having Jewish or Israelitish names are the same. Then, except as I have accounted for it, how is it to be accounted for? Here he mentions that the history and chronology of India is so contaminated with nonsense. He goes on to give one such story about the deceased Brahmins that I won't repeat, but notice that the city of Judea was changed in the process to Udayapur. He also mentions that these Ranas are thought to be modern date, but they were noticed by Ptolemy, as well as the ancient Gazamera, known as Ajimir today. You should note that the Gazamera in the Indus was the first Gaza. The Ranas spoken of were the kings of a very old city of the tribe of Yaodi, disguised by the name of Yudayapur, but the original name is Ayode. So the descendants of the ancients of Oudipur are, in other words, the descendants of the Jews and are still there today. No, the Ranas were not destroyed by the Mohammedans. They might have mixed with them somewhat, but they were not destroyed. The Ranas and the ancient city of Oudipur are also said to be before the time of Christ. Let's continue. Delhi was formerly called Indrapresta and was founded by Yudhistra. The Stra is like the Stra in Saurastra, a termination which I do not understand, but it leaves the Yudi, the most ancient of the cities of this part of India, are Oude or Yadye and Agra, the latter of which went to decay and was rebuilt by Akbar. Colonel Todd says a colony of the Yadu dwelt in the mountains called, in Reynolds' map, Ayodis, when they were expelled from Sarastra. No one can deny that these Yadu or Ayodi dwelt, to use a Bible phrase, in the mountains of Judah. These were the Yadus of Jesulmer. These Yadus have now got corrupted into Jadun. Speaking of Jadpur, the colonel says the view will give a more correct idea of the city of Joda than any description. Here, the doctrine which I teach is unconsciously adopted by Colonel Todd. Ayad means Joda or Judah. We have already covered that the Arga was the name of the Ark, symbolized by a boat, and it was also the name of the city that was rebuilt by Akbar. You should note that Akbar fancied himself the tenth avatar. You should also note that the most ancient of cities in this part of India is Aude, Yadya, and Agra. No, it is said that the ancient Yadus dwelt in the mountains called Ayodes after they were expelled from Saurastra. The mountains of Ayodes is nothing but the mountains of Judah. The Yadus were from Jesulmer, but the name Yadu 
was corrupted to Jadoons, of course, to hide the true name and its meaning. No, the city of Jesulmer is the first Jerusalem before it was moved to the west. Please note that Ayad means Jodah or Judah. In latitude 26, 31 north, longitude 74, 28 east, is the city called Ajimir or Gazamir, the Gazamira of Ptolemy, adjoining to a large lake. Here is Gaza of Syria and the old English word Mir for a lake. We have Whitlesey Mir near Peterborough, Hornsey Mir near Kingston on Hull. In the kingdom of Brigantia, near the river Umber, is all this accidental? Colonel Todd says that the word Mer in the Hindu language means hill, then it will be the hill of Aji. But the expression of Ptolemy shows that the two words Aji and Gaza are the same. The word which we call Gaza in the Hebrew is written Aza. This means goat, the same as Aji which tends to prove that the original must have been Aji. The lake of Pacha is close by Ajimir and the town of Gaza being on the sea. The word Mer must mean both hill and the Latin Mir or Meris or Meris, a lake. The Hebrew M-R-E or Mer. Colonel Todd explains the word Jerusalem to mean Mer Jesul or hill of Jesul. The double meaning of the word Mer arises from all these sacred mounts being initiative Merus. Thus they might be all called Mer. Meru, we must recollect, was a hill in a sea or surrounded by an oceanus, and from this the two came to be confounded. But this will be more clearly shown presently. The river anciently called Pontus in Thrace is now by the Turks called Mer, and the lake into which it runs Mer Mer, whence I am justified in concluding that the word Mer meant lake in the old language before it was changed or translated by the Greeks into Pontus. No one can doubt that Casimir or Kashmir was called from the lake which it probably once filled its valley. This again fixes one of the meanings of the word mir or mer. The missionary Dr. Buchanan states his opinion that the religion of Buddha arose near Tibet. He names a river of Siam which rises near the frontiers of China and which is in the Burman Empire and he gives a description of a most holy imaginary mountain in the same empire called Siam. I think it probable that the kingdom of Siam had its name and religion from this country. Here we have the Siam referred to by Lombier in Book 5, Chapter 3, Section 8. The Siamese he states to be called Udaya, which he observes is nothing but Judea. Okay, as I have said before, the ancient Gaza Mira, known as Ajimir today, is the first Gaza before the name was carried to Syria. The name Mir is Lake in the Old English and can be found in place names such as Whitlesey Mir and Hornsey Mir in the Kingdom of Brigantia. But the word Mir or Mir in the Hindu language means hill, which was said to be corrupted by the Greeks, but in the ancient language means lake. The same word and meaning made its way to the British Isles long before it was corrupted. No, mer or mere clearly has a double meaning. The first being the mountains. All the mountains are given the name Meru. It is said that Mount Meru is surrounded by sea and shows how the double meaning could have arisen. The word mer. Meru, Meru can be found in India, Egypt and the British Isles and other places in the world. They mentioned that the river of Siam 
near to China in the Burman Empire was an holy imaginary mountain called Sion. They also stated that the Siamese are called Yudaya, which is nothing but Judea. Now we see that Jerusalem is really hill of Jesul, and we will later discover the true meaning of Jesul or Jerusalem. Mount Zion is a mystic mount and came from the Mount Zion of the Burmese Empire or of the Kingdom of Siam or as La Labir says of the Sions for there seems to have been a ridge of them like the ridge of the Alps it is the mount of the gods or of happy beings in the Kingdom of Siam the mount where the gods reside and there were several of these mounts above one another for different orders of beings and though I have no authority for the assertion, I have no doubt that they were on the sides of the north. In short, Sion, meaning the holy mount, was Mount Meru. There were seven heavens before the throne of God. The word Zion in the Hebrew correctly means a stone mount and has also the meaning of the stone corn of the western nations. Mr. Turner observed the same corns in Tibet. They are equally found in the Iona of the Hebrides. Every person in passing these mounts thinks it an act of piety to add a stone to them. There is also a mystical Zion in Keelan, where the Samaritan Pentateuch places Mount Ararat. The Singhalese tradition state them to have come from the land of Ava, that is of Eva. In the Buddhist doctrines of Keelan, the Mount Zion or triumphing heaven makes a great figure. It is called a place of salvation. It is evidently like the Mount Zion of the Jews, a mystical mount having in reality the same name. The etymology of the word Zion I reserve to a future book. The ancient name of Tibet or Tibet was Baltistan, that is the place of Balti or Baltis of Syria. Mr. Faber has shown that the city of Sidon in Syria where the god Dagon was adored, had its name from an oriental city on the Erythrean Sea, called Sidon. But Trogus says that the Erythrean Sidon was not the original settlement of the Sidonians, but that they came from a more eastern part. The following observation of Nimrods will pretty well show us the origin of the famous Mount Moriah, or Sion of the Jews, coming as they do from so good a Greek and Latin scholar and at the same time from a devotee and unwilling witness with the impartial inquirer they will command the greatest respect. Bellerophon fought against the female host of the Amazonians. He fought also with the Solomai, a circumstance which tends to identify him with Memnon who on his way to relieve Troy met and overthrew. Immediately behind Phaselis or Pamphilis rose Mount Solimus and close to it probably one of its peaks Mount Olympus or the Red or Lophus or Conical Hill over Termesus of Poseidia was called by the Greek name and hard by it a work of antiquity called the Rampart of Bellerophon or Mount. A Mount Solimus was like Ida to Jove or seat of speculation to the Ethiopian Neptune. In fact, it was one of the many names used among the nations for an Olymp, or sacrificial and oracular high place. In the maritime Syria, there was a very famous city of a memorial sanctity and containing with it its purlieus, several mounts dedicated to the mysteries of the Syrian or Ionian religion especially the Mount Moriah or Olivet and the Mount Zion. This city, founded by the Jebusites, Canaanites, was called Solima and by way of honor, Herosolima. It was taken from its subsequent possessors, the Jews and Benjamites, by Nebuchadnezzar the Great, a prince of the Syrian religion, which heresy he raised to an unexampled pitch of splendor and out of the spoils of Hera Salima, he found a new city, Salima, in Assyria. 
So, the Mount Zion in Keelon, or triumphing heaven, is called a place of salvation and is similar to the Mount Zion of the Jews, both having the same name. We will get to the meaning of Zion or Zion in the near future. Now, the original name of Tibet, or the name before it was called Tibet, was Baltistan, which means the place of Balti or Baaltis of Syria where the name Baal or the god Baal came from. Now, Rogus has shown that the city of Sidon in Syria, where the god Dagon was adored, came from a more eastern part, and that Eritrea was not the original settlement of the Sidonians, therefore could not have been the original Sion. We see that the meaning of Olympus or Olymp means sacrifice, Take note of the word Olymp, because we will get back to that word in the future. We see that the same concept was in Greece and Ethiopia, and we see that there are several mounds and places bearing the same name or meanings. Again, Nimrod says this place, Hera Salima, was not occupied by the chosen people till the time of Joshua but it was solemnly consecrated to the uses of the Christian worship in the days of Abraham by the symbolic offering of his son. And the same Abraham, having vanquished a league of kings, met in the neighborhood with a personage named Melchizedek, king of Salem, who initiated him into the mysteries of the Christian sacrament. Sacrifice with immolation and libation was appointed for anticipation of an atonement to come, but the two latter were thought sufficient for the commemoration thereof when complete. We are not told what place it was that was called Salem, but we find the Israelites, when in possession of Jerusalem, invariably calling it Jerusalem, behold peace, and Josephus, who was ignorant of the nature and character of Melchizedek, and mistook him for some Jebusite prince, informs us that he first gave to the city Jerusalem its present name. Here then we have the truth. The name Salim was changed to Salem, and Jerusalem to Jerusalem. Notwithstanding some nonsense and several mistakes, here are several very important admissions of Nimrods, as we shall presently see. What I have said before respecting the change of Salem to Jerusalem is here confirmed. The meaning of the present name Jerusalem is according to our divines, he shall see peace. But perhaps, like many other mythic words, it had two meanings. Nimrod seems to have forgotten that Eupolemus tells us that Melchizedek lived at Gerizim. Before I proceed further with the meaning of the word Jerusalem, we must discuss several other circumstances connected with it. The Solimai are named by Homer, and there were a people noticed of that name in Lycia or Lycia, in Asia Minor, a province adjoining to Pasidia. I suspect that they were a sect driven out of India to the west, and the builders of Jerusalem or Herosolima, the sacred Solima, I learn from the author of Nimrod that Memnon was said to have fought the Salimai, that is, that the sun fought them. This might mean that they were driven from the east. There were fourteen buds or Buddhas, incarnations of divine wisdom under that name. There were also fourteen incarnations of divine wisdom under the name of Menu, and there were fourteen Solomons, all perhaps different names for the same mythos, but in the Jewish books, we only read of one Menu and one Noah, or of one Solomon the wise. I now beg my reader to reflect upon the fact of Sanskrit words being found in the Latin and Greek languages. This done, he will probably not be surprised to find Latin words in India. He will recollect that the temples or sacred places in Judea were called Bit Al, or House of God, and Solomon built a house to the Lord, by which name of house the temple of Jerusalem, in a very pointed manner, was called. Thus, this being premised, the next place which I shall notice is Tukte Solomon. This is Tektum, or house of Solomon, 
It is one of the five sacred mounts, Merus or Olympuses or Solimai of India. It is not far from the hills called the mountains or ridge of Solomon, but the Tukte Solomons or houses of Solomon were not confined to India. Here we see that the Israelites were found occupying Jerusalem, or they called it Jerusalem, but it was called Herosalim. The name Solim was changed to Salem, so Herosalim became Jerusalem and later Jerusalem the present name. The question is, why were those changes made? They mentioned that they noticed the people of Lycia or Lycia in Asia Minor, which is adjoined to Poseidia, and they were thought to be driven out of India to the west, and they were the builders of Jerusalem or Herosalem. I have already shown you that Memnon was a representation of the sun and not a real figure. No, they were 14 incarnations or avatars of Buddha. There were also 14 Menu and 14 Solomons or Solomons, some having different names for the same mythos. Genghis Khan was considered the 10th avatar of Buddha. There were several Moseses, Noahs, Josephs, but in the Jewish books, we only read of one Solomon, one Noah, and one Menu, among others. No, the Latin language can also be found in the Indus or India, and we have established several times that the names of Egypt, Syria, and other regions originated from the Indus. There is the Tukta Solomon, which is house of Solomon. It is one of the five sacred mounts Meru or Olympuses or Solomon of India and is not far from the hills called Mountain of Solomon and can be found in other regions of the world by the same people who carried those names there. In Moriar's travels in Persia, may be seen a building the style of which at once proves its great antiquity. It is called Madre Solomon. One seven towers of Cyclopean architecture stands a square house with pitched roof formed of large stones projecting one over the other, like the roof of the cave at the New Grange in Ireland, the cave at Mycenae, the walls of Tyrins, and the temple of Kumulmar, described by Colonel Todd in the history of Rajaputana. The Persians attribute it to Solomon, but modern learned men think they have made out that it is the tomb of Cyrus. They may please themselves with this fancy, but the style, the traditional name, the seven steps, and the square building at the top, all joined together pretty well satisfy me that it is a tech to Solomon. If it had been the tomb of their great Cyrus, it would never have lost its name or designation. I would ask, what has a Mandre Solomon do in Persia? According to our construction of the text of the Jewish historians, though the Persians say that Abraham was their ancestor, they do not see his successors. A thousand years afterward were their ancestors. Then how came they to think of Solomon as the author of this building? I think it probable under these circumstances that this is not the building alluded to by Arian, Curtius, Pliny, and so on in their account of the visit to it of Alexander the Great, but one of the same nature as the Merus of India. I consider the traditional name of the building among the... Before we continue, here... We have the building called Madre Soliman in Persia that can be found in New Grange in Ireland, the cave at Mycenae, the walls of Tyrins, and the temple of Komulmar. But notice where it says modern learned men think it is the tomb of Cyrus. But all evidence shows and proves that it is a Tecte Solomon. No, if it had been the tomb of the famous Cyrus, it would have never lost its name or importance. 
No, the question is, why would there be a Tecte Solomon in Persia? Because according to the Jewish text, there should be no such thing. We already know they were the same people, but generations apart. Now we will see the connection in the mythos. Among the ignorant natives, as better authority than Greek historians, for I again ask, how could the name of Solomon come here among the unlearned natives? Persons are struck, at first, with the connection between Abraham, whom, as just mentioned, the Persians claim for their ancestor, and Solomon, but such persons do not attend to the circumstance of the dates, which show that even admitting Abraham to have been the ancestor of the Persians, this gives them no interest whatever in the son of Bathsheba, Abraham's descendant who never was in Persia or had any connection with it. The Persians' romances say that they were 70 or 72 rulers called Solomon before Adam. This has an obvious relation to the 71 Manwataras of the Hindus and evidently is the same history as the 72 Solomons alluded to before in this work. Persepolis, or the city of Perse in Greek, was called in Persian Tukti Gemshid, from which we may infer that this fabulous king was the Perseus of the Greeks, who was the son, thus Tukti Gemshid being the same as city of Gemshid. We come to the conclusion that Tukti Solomon is the same as the city of Solomon. Here we arrive at an important truth by recourse to my system of applying to several languages and going, in fact, to the first system of letters and written language as far as we can get. No one will doubt the identity of these Tuktis. So you see that there were 71 Manwataras in the Indus, meaning 71 Solomons, and the same mythos is found in Persia, where their story says that they were 70 or 72 rulers called Solomon before Adam. I know some people might be saying this is nonsense, but maybe one day or soon I can point out most if not all 72 Solomons or representations of the sun. They also mention the system of letters and written languages as far as we can go back. We will definitely cover the origin of writing, what came first and what came after, and by whom. Now, the age of writing, which can be used as a scale to determine who went where and when, in other words, the migration of man. Nimrod says, the Mahabadian line is nothing but the succession of antediluvian patriarchs, that is, a supposed succession of reincarnations of Buddha, or the son in Taros, Mahabad is great Bud. He says after this line came Gemshid, or Perseus, whose emblem was a lamb, which is yet common on medal struck in his honor. A very important observation has been made by Sir Arthur Porter, that he found the traits of resemblance striking and numerous, betwixt the ruins of the temples of Persepolis and the description of the temple of Solomon. Okay, so they mentioned the Mahabadian line or lineage, meaning a succession of reincarnations of Buddhas or the sun in Taurus, a succession of Buddhas of antediluvian patriarchs before the cycle went into Aries. It is said that after the succession of Buddhas or lineage of Buddhas came the Gemshid or Perseus whose emblem was a lamb. In Porter's travels may be found the description of the remains of a city called Takti Salimon of very great and unknown antiquity. This city of ancient ruins has been thoughtlessly ascribed to the 15th Caliph. Another of these places called Takti Suleiman or the throne of Suleiman, may be found described in volume 1, page 485. Pliny calls this place Pasargada and says that here is the tomb of Cyrus 
by whom it was built. If my reader will consult Pocock's travels, he will see good reason to believe that Solomon's gardens and pools in Syria were gardens of Daphne or Ameru. Though Pocock did not in the least understand the subject, he could not help observing that it is probable there were hanging gardens on the side of the hill. The plate describes a perfect Meru with its seven hills one above another and its mount on which Pocock observes probably the house stood at the top. In Asia Minor, near Telmesus, noticed before there were Solimene mountains, one of these of great height called Taktalu by the present Turks was called formerly by the Greeks Mount Solima. Here is, I think, the Tekta Solima of the Hindus of Rajaputana. Here is also an example of the old name returning to the place. I think no one can refuse his assent to the identity of these two curious names, Tekta Solima and Taktalu Solima. Josephus says that the Jews assisted the Persians against Greece. He cites the poet Cherilus, who, he says, names a people who dwelt on the Solimene mountains of Asia Minor and spoke Phoenician. Bochart, not knowing what to make of this, supposes that what he alluded to was a colony of Phoenicians who had settled in Asia Minor near to the Lake Phacelis. The colony here spoken of, I think, were from Takte Salimi or Salimai. They were Ayodi, which is confirmed by their sooty heads, like horses' heads dried in the smoke, and their having the torture or shaven crown, which Bochart has shown was prohibited to the Jews, and by the fact of the prohibition shows that it had once existed. The Buddhists of Tibet have the torture, right? So in Asia Minor, near Tel Mesus, there were Solomon Mountains, one of which was called Taktalu by the present Turks and by the Greeks before them Mount Solima, which is the Tekte Solima of the Hindus of Rajaputana. We can clearly see that both names are the same, Tekte Solima and Taktalu Solima. There was mention of the Phoenicians in Asia Minor, near the Lake Phacelis, and are thought to be from Tukte Salimai. They were Ayodi, which is confirmed by their shaved heads. But notice how he describes them as sooty heads, like horses' head dried in the smoke, meaning they were black or dark brown. It is observed by Mercator that by the poets Jerusalem was called Salima or Salome from Josephus. It appears that there was a Mount Salima near the Lake Asphaltes in Judea about latitude 27 north and longitude 71 east. On Colonel Todd's map will be found the place called Jesulmer. I learned from the colonel's work that it is a place of very great antiquity and in a peculiar manner sacred among the Buddhists. In one of the temples is a very large library and in the center of it suspended by a chain of gold in a golden case is a most sacred holy manuscript which is expressly forbidden to be read or even looked upon. It is believed that any person reading it would be instantly struck blind. Some time ago the prince of the country caused it to be brought to him in order that he might read it, but his courage failed, and he sent but the virgin undeflowered, and thus it will probably remain till some sacrilegious European lays hands on it. These circumstances show, I think, that the city of Jesulmer is no common place, and now I beg my reader to transpose the letters of this word, Jesulmer, and he will find they make Jerusalem. Take this by itself and the fact would be of little consequence, but couple it with all the other circumstances with the names of the other towns which I have pointed out, and I defy the unprejudiced reader to divest his mind of a strong suspicion 
that the Jerusalem of the West is the Jesulmer of the East or vice versa. Jesulmer changed into Jerusalem is nothing but an example of the practice called Thelmeru or changing of the tribe of Ayodhi of writing words in the way called anagrammatical. It is quite surprising to what a length this foolish and childish practice was carried. Even in modern times, John Calvinus called himself Alcunus. When a person observes the variety of ways in which the names of these cities and countries are written into English by our Indian travelers from the old dialects of the country, I do not speak of the Sanskrit. He will be willing to allow a very considerable latitude scarcely any two of them use the same letters though the striking similitude to the jewish names is apparent in them all no we have already established that there was an ancient city in the indus called jesulmer in which jerusalem got its name we were told that salem means peace or jerusalem no we will see the true meaning of Jerusalem and also Zion or Zion. But before we get to that, they mentioned that in one of the temples in Jesulmer is a very large library and in the center of it suspended by a chain of gold in a golden case and is said to be a most sacred holy manuscript which no one is allowed to read or even look upon. It is believed that any person reading it would be instantly blind right anything to get us to not know the truth but the question is how can some of us believe in these fables i mean no one thought of reading it it was said the prince of the country decided to read it once and for all but his courage failed him the meaning of jerusalem is the sacred ladder Salim in Hebrew, Sulma in Chaldee, the 70 or LXX render the Hebrew Salim by Greek and Jerom by Scala. The Mount Climax of Strabo in Asia Minor was called Mount Salim or Salima by the natives and Climax was only a Greek translation of the Oriental name. I suspect that the name of the town of the inhabitants of Telemessus who lived close to Mount Salima and who were called Salimai was a mere corruption of the Hebrew Salim that in a similar way the word Jesulmer of India is a corruption from the same name like the name of the Syrian Meru called Moriah or Sion or Arga or Arka or Salima the city of Jerusalem is spelt with a shin and not a Samek the Samek being one of the new letters. If the 16-letter system be true, this makes nothing against my argument, for in all this I must be supposed to speak of a time before the letters of the alphabets were increased, when the Shin must have been used. Our priest will tell me that the Hebrew Salim or Salem means peace, but the passages of Straba, Jerom, and the 70 or LXX compared with the circumstances relating to the town in Asia Minor show pretty well what was the original meaning but it is very likely that it took the meaning of peace from being the name of the Mount of Peace Mount Zion here we have the true meaning of Jerusalem which means sacred ladder so Salem means ladder or steps and of course jeru means sacred no sion means peace so mount sion is mount of peace with all these changes of words and their definitions there would be no way to make any true connections and that is why the origin of things are very important eros in greek means sacred and I suspect it has come from some Asiatic word now lost, or at least unknown to me. And when I consider the form of Meru, step above step, the Madre Solomon of Persia, and the rendering of the word Hebrew Salim in the LXX or 70 by, I think, Chaldee 
and in the Vulgate by scholar, and the same word Hebrew Salim used from Jacob's ladder, seen at Bithal, or the house of God, on which seventy-two angels ascended and descended. I suspect that the hero, or the Hebrew Ire, means sacred, the sacred ladder, or the sacred mount. It is what the Greeks call Olympus, the bit all Bethel, or house of God, which Jacob's place of the ladder was called, is not unlike the tectum of the Salami. We must also remember that Solomon, an incarnation of wisdom, is closely connected with the wisdom of the Buddhist. The observation respecting the similarity of the tectum of the Solomon of Tukte Solomon to the Hebrew Bit Al of Genesis is the more striking because I learned from my friend Colonel Todd who lived at a little distance from the Tukte Solomon for almost 20 years who speaks the language of the country with ease and who actually made a survey of it that in the language of the country generally a temple is called Bethel which means edifice or house of the sun he says that though the language of the country is not Sanskrit yet entire sentences may sometimes be found which betray the Sanskrit and that it has many words which must have come from some language of Central Asia right so all these nations with Asiatic words in their dialects and we see that Beth El means edifice or house of the sun and the words Bit Al have the same meaning it is quite clear that the religion was spread across the globe and many versions of the same story may appear we see that the Hebrew word Ire means sacred and this name can be found in the British Isles and in America, among other places. You should note that the sacred ladder, Jacob's ladder, and the 72 angels ascending and descending, the Olympus of the Greeks, are all the same. But the parent of them all are the 71 Manwar Taras of India, the 71 Salima, or Solomon all this will be further explained so simple yet so deep we just need all the pieces first before diving into those subjects but of all the temples of Solomon I consider none are more important than the Takta Solomon or Tekta Solomon which is found in Kashmir Mr. Foster was so much struck with the general appearance garb and manners of the Kashmirians as to think he had suddenly been transported among a nation of Jews. The same idea was impressed upon the mind of Monsignor Bournier on his visiting that country. This Kashmirian temple of Solomon will be found of great consequence. Father Georgius, who was master of the Tibetan language, quotes the story of Anubret from Sanchanithian and shows that the Jude of Sancha Nithian is the Jid of the Tibetans. Jid, a Tibetanist potatri bottom. Thus, we have the mount or house or habitation of Solomon or Solima in India or the country of Ayad or of Daud Patri or of the sons of David in Persia, the Madre Salima and the same also in Palestine and in Asia Minor and all in some way or other connected with the tribe of Ayodi, can anyone believe all this to be the effect of accident solomon was a personification or incarnation of wisdom and the jews of asia minor were a tribe or colony from india of black buddhist at or about the same time with the Ayodi to syria under the brahmin that's it for today Thanks for watching. See you soon. Take care.